happy new year like wow we right we're here we, we are here oh my gosh so we got That's about 20, 20 seconds before we go live on air so okay. as y'all can see my special guest is Myron carter i think i turned my ringer off because now we're gonna be okay <laughs> i'm gonna make sure mine is off too right after i share All right, here we go, y'all. Good morning. Happy New Year, everybody that's listening. Good morning. We're yes. tuned into Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kalila Jones, and my special guest today is Mylon Carter. We will be discussing the last principle of Kwanzaa, which is Imani, which means faith. Now, as you know, uh, Kaylee K has been doing a series uh, of Kwanzaa messages all week, um, all well, starting last week. Well, this week. Okay, I'm lost my time. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Okay, and so the mess, the overall theme is for the culture, bridging the generational gap. And so the message for today, well, the message theme, rather, I should say, for today is... The struggle is not in vain. And I want to quickly read to you what faith, what Imani means. To believe with all our heart in our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, and the righteousness and victory of our struggle. And so that's why I chose the topic, our struggle is not in vain. And so I'm going to let Mr. Mylon Carter take it away with his message of uh, on faith. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Um, happy Kwanzaa. I'm super excited uh, about the fact that we've crossed over into another year. Um, it's been a, it's been 2020 was a was a long year. It seems like we had two of every month, two, two Januarys, two Februarys and so on, two Decembers. But we're here. Um, Imani um, was I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty was pretty excited when I was given this topic, um, because right away, the first thing I thought about was, you know, um, was, I mean, faith, you know, that's, that's my life. Um, that's all I've ever known, to be honest with you. Um, but I was looking up the word money, of course, and money uh, means faith or, um, um, and it's funny to me because sometimes I find myself researching and then I'll research and then find myself going a little bit deeper. Also, um, I was just really curious to wonder what money meant and, um, in different interpretations or different languages. In the Hebrew, it means God with us, which is interpreted biblically. Um, which is Emmanuel, which is um, in the book of Isaiah, when um, when Isaiah um, said that you know mentioned for mentioned that Jesus was coming, and he makes the statement. He says that um, that his he should be called Emmanuel, uh, wonderful Counselor, um, which means God's with us. I thought that was so amazing, you know, how this principle ties into the fact. So when you hear it, the word in money, um, or or the Hebrew word um, for money would be Emmanuel. Um, when you hear those principles, you 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 hear right away God with us. So um, the first thing that I thought, I said, faith is not just believing. Um, when, it comes to, when it comes to faith, um, we, we're often taught, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is Hebrew 13, I mean, Hebrew 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things so far and the evidence of things not seen. That's, that's the, um, the direct evidence or the di direct definition, if you will, of faith. Um, so we think we, that's the first thing that comes to mind, but if we were to break down what, what particular scripture is saying, it says now faith is a substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen. Um, we all, to me, when I hear it that way or see it that way, the first thing I think about faith is what I don't already see, but okay. I'm hoping faith is what I don't already believe, or I'm believing that, um, let me say, um, well, I'll say where there is no evidence um, or, or me, there's no evidence currently, so my faith or my belief is me um, me hoping that what I'm what I'm I'm believing for the evidence is physically in my hand. But I want to show you something different. Um, faith does not only see with hope because it says, says faith is the substance of things hoped for, or in the evidence of things not seen. Faith does not only see with hope. Um, faith faith is is evidence because of hope. Um, and um, the scripture goes down into, as you go down into Hebrews um, 11, and you go into Hebrews 12 and 1, um, and, and it goes into so many biblical witnesses that talks about um, how they stepped out and how they um, they did things by faith and how the evidence of them stepping out by faith, um, how think God worked it out because they, you know, they just, just believe God. I want to pull out just for the sake of um, 
of of talking about not being able to see it until I mean not being able to only not being able to physically see what you believe. I want to pull out Abraham for example. Um, one of the first things that came to my mind was was to just actually get up to get the command to get up, get out of your bed, and and go. I mean, okay. really. I mean, God God got up and told Abraham. He said, "Get up, take your family, and go." Abraham, not knowing where he was going, just get up and go. It takes it takes faith. Um, it takes faith to just to get a one a two word commandment with no instructions to just go. So with with, with that being said, the first thing that I thought about was um, faith is not faith is not um, necessarily um, uh, uh, to the provision to get you there. Faith is actually believing God when there's nothing in your hands. Okay. Um, faith is 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 God. I believe. God. I want. God. I accept. Um, I'm. I'm my, by faith, I'm gonna have. An, I'm gonna get this new house. By faith, um, I'm gonna get the new car. By faith, um, I believe that my life is gonna change. My finances are gonna change. These are things we confess we want to happen. Um, but but if we really be honest with what we are, when we start believing things by faith, we start we start confessing by faith from a place of what we don't have. Okay, I believe my finances are gonna increase because I'm not where I want to be financially. We 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 um we pray that that we uh we get a new car because currently the car we have we may or may not be satisfied with, or maybe we are. We just want something different. So okay. those these principles, these principles, um, when you talk about faith, these we, we we confess things by faith based on what we don't currently have. However, faith is not always giving you what you don't have. Not it's not always giving you necessarily what you need. Faith is 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 an increase or maturity. Um, to um, because faith for me, faith faith does several things. One thing that faith does, faith um, it it enhances my prayer life. Okay. It um, it strengthens it strengthens my waiting, and then not only that, it confirms that God comes through. Okay. Because okay. I believe by faith, I don't already see it. I confess by faith what because that's what I want, and um, and I have received it by faith because God's done it. So it it, it increases my faith. I mean, it increases my my relationship with God. There's a there's a scenario I like to use um, very often um, when it comes to faith. Um, faith graduates to trust. Okay. Okay. Faith, faith is simply this: if in fact you tell me, Mylon, I'm going to give you five dollars. You've never given me money before, okay. so I have faith in you that you're going to give it to me before. Okay. And you turn around and you just give me you give me five dollars. Now this time you come back and you say, Mylon, I'm going to give you twenty dollars. And now, now you've given me $5 for I'm like, okay, well, you know, yeah, she gives me money, you know? So, so guess what? Now that you've given me the five, because I have faith in you that you said you're going to, you were going to do what you said you're going to do, but you come back and give me this $20. My faith has now graduated to trust because guess what? If you did it before. You do it again. Yeah. All so right. So now, oh, go ahead. That's, that's, that's how, that's how. Um, our relationship strengthens through our faith with God. Because when we first start believing God, we've never seen him work before. But if you go back and you check your, your, your line of history, how many things have you believed God for that you did not have? He came through, he did those things. And before you knew it, his, he, he, he keeps coming through. He did this. Okay, he, thank you. He did that. Thank you. He did that. Thank you. You're graduating. Your thank you has now become it's not an expectancy of only only asking to receive, but it's expectancy of whatever I ask, because I believe it. If I do what he wants me to do according to his will, it's going to happen. All right. Yeah. I want to tie in. Um, we're going to get back to definitely tie that into the theme of the message. Our struggle is not in vain. Mm -hmm. But I want to quickly bring up the Black History moment that I was going to record for today. I always want to do a Black History moment that's related to Kwanzaa. And the one that I chose was the Great Migration. Yeah. The Great Migration happened um, between 1916 and 1970. It was a time period when, right when the World War I was starting in Europe. And so the, the times in the South were getting hard, where they were already hard. These right. were free slaves that really still didn't have a, they didnn't have a place. Um, there was a, tra a travesty that came through that, uh, harm the crops. And so money was low, work was low, things were dire. So then there was this message, message sent out that there was a need for workers in the North, in the right. West, in the Midwest. I remember. And so our people, Black people, packed up. And again, they moved on faith that they say there are jobs up there. They say they need people. 
we're going to go and see what's going to happen. Yeah. And so these people together, collectively, it was groups of people that moved together. You know, mm-hmm. these people didn't, some of them, they knew each other. Some of them may never have worked together. So again, right. you go back to that. I don't see it. I don't really know. You but I'm believe. just going to trust and believe right. that when I get there, it's going to be better than what's down here in the South. Absolutely. So, and we know that also during that time, later on, there was the rise of the KKK. There was the Jim Crow laws, the Black Codes, and all of those other oppressive regimes that were put in place to hold Black people down and keep them from prospering. And so again, people, Black people were like, we got to go. We can't do this. No. They moved right. on their faith. Just right. like you said with Abraham, he packed up his family and said, we don't know where we're going, but we're going right. somewhere. <laughs> right. It, it takes, it's a very strong it takes a strong, a very strong faith. First of all, to get up and move and do something yourself, but to have people connected to you, to have people who are, um, as a man, as a husband, as a father, sometimes depending on you, you know, to okay, what are we going to do? And sometimes you can look at that thing as pressure, but then you know you can also look at the, look at that particular thing as as a as a way to be empowered because not only am I believing that if I just say yes, if I just if I just um, take the first step, that God's going to take care of me. But it's going to take care of me and everything connected to me. There it's going to take care of everything. And that that alone for me has been a continual push for faith. Um, when I tell you that um, um, my wife and I, um, we have, oh God, I tell her all the time. When I met her, she had gone through some things and was such a powerful woman of faith. And and we've gone through some things together and, um, and we prayed and and we, we got through some things, you know, via through faith and and I tell her all the time, I said, if God's done it before for you, what makes you think he does not? Co-? First of all, it's something different when, and I say it all the time because it just blesses me so much, um, um, it's it's different to have gone through some things and never experienced God's power okay. or never experienced God's evidence or never experienced the evidence of faith. But it's it's something when you've gone through, glory to God. It's something when when you when you when you can when you can pray. And you can pray, and sometimes let me let me refer, and not get tired of praying. You okay. pray until you get evidence. Praying until you, but you can pray and pray and pray. And guess what? When God does it, I never get. I never. I'm never. I'm never not surprised by Him coming through for me. Okay. I, I, I pray with the expectancy that it's going to come through. But when in fact I pray, when in fact I believe God, and He gives me the evidence, the answer that I've been asking or I've been I've been believing him for. For me, that tells me, God, you love me enough to to first of all let me pray. And some we'll say, well, I've been praying and praying and God it came through yet. No, that's not why he, he's not praying and praying to try to to to, to act to uh, uh make you uncomfortable or to make you feel um that he's picking on you. He's he's causing you to pray and pray more before he gets your answer because he wants you to know that not only am I going to strengthen and come through for you because of the thing you pray for via faith. But I'm trying to tell you that the more you ask me, the more comfortable you, you become about asking me. The more comfortable you become about saying, uh, because here's the thing, the more conversations I have with you, the more comfortable I am with you. But if I only talk to you when I need something and only come back and see you next year when I need something else, I don't know you. I don't get relationship with you. Thank so you the, purpose of, the purpose of continual prayer and continual asking God for what seems like the same thing is not redundancy, it's growth. Wow. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And so now let's, I want to say good morning to a few people. I, I don't want them to, no, I'm not ignoring y'all. Um, Alvernice Clark. And That's my, my mommy in love. Hey, mom. Uh, <laughs> and she says, niece is watching. And good morning to my sister in Arizona. Happy New Year to you too. All right. So now let's tie all of this in to our people, our community. Because this yes. is what Kwanzaa is all about. And going back to the other principles, and I, I've stated them all week, there is unity, self-determination, yes. collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, um, purpose, creativity, and now faith. Tying all of these things in together, we have to work together. Absolutely. Once you figure out who you are, then you can work within the group. So That's now let's tie in it. faith and believing in our people and believing in ourselves. Tie that message in. And I like to, I found a hash, well, I created a hashtag also um, for each day. And the hashtag for today is we shall prevail. No matter yes. what we've gone through, been through, what it looked like, 
we shall prevail. The struggle right. is not in vain. So tie all of those things in if you can. I um, I um I wrote down something in my notes and um um in order to conquer through faith, we must think, we must approach like a warrior. Okay. That's what I wrote. And um in order to conquer through faith, you must approach, we must approach like a warrior. First of all, um a warrior is not is not a natural is not uh they're born fighters. However, they have there's principles, there's strategy. There's um there has there has to be experience and lessons learned to become a, to be deemed an actual warrior. You know what I mean? Oh, um, mm-hmm. and 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 the more you go through, the more you experience, the more you experience life, the more you it makes it increases the fighter in you. Now watch this. Uh, a, a a warrior is not one of those people who are just fighters only. They know when to fight. They know how to fight. They know what they know what tools to pull out. They know what strategies to use. They know when you have to approach a battle softly, or if it's even a battle at all. Okay. Um. Um. They, they, you know, have to have a soft approach versus a um an aggressive approach. All of that. Um. Um. It's 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 a, it's a part of a born warrior. What does this tie in with with all of us? To, you know, all of us coming together. We have to think like warriors. And not only that, not 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 alone. Not alone as warriors. Warriors are are part of an army. They're part of a people um, that are that are trained together and equipped together to fight. We have experienced, of course, in 2020, this pandemic, and and in our community, we experienced some things. I personally have have dealt with some racism since I've been in Jonesboro. Um, um, some direct racism, some things that I know were direct uh, were de- directly uh, meant to insult me, and they did. I mean, I went home and discussed it with my wife or people that I deemed it necessary. But I'm gonna tell you something. It, I could have chose to go back and say, you know what, um, all all white people are the same. Or, but I, here's the thing: I chose to be the difference I want to see. I chose to be the difference. Uh, one thing about me: my personality is big. I'm a big personality, um, and I don't know a stranger. And um, I was just sharing with my wife just this morning via telephone. I was just telling her. I said, um, um, she made the statement that she was extra. I said, it's, it's okay to be extra because you're married to me, and I'm extra. <laughs> I said, I said, I hid my extra for so long, you know. I said, because I, it was so easy for me to try to come and fit in, you know, and try to try to figure out where I fit in with, 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 with what was already made. But here's the thing. When you're an extra, we're, we're extrovert, when you're outgoing, when you're the oddball, you have the opportunity to do something that most people don't, can't do. You create stuff. You yeah. create an atmosphere. You are able to, to create a, to, to start a trend, make a hashtag, um, create a saying. Um, people look for you to be that, that, that moment of a, a fresh air when you walk into a room. And so for me, that's community. For me, that's faith. To me, that's, that's, um, that's all the principles that come together um, that we talk about in Kwanzaa, that's all the principles that come together, but that makes us a community. You get to be an atmosphere setter. You get be, you get to be a trend setter. You get to create a laugh. You know, you get to um, put a color skin together that nobody thought about. I would never never thought to put that and that together, but it's cute though. You know, and those moments are continual, and those moments come together to create a better a better uh, living environment for family. It creates friendship circles. It creates connections. It causes us to network. It causes us to get to know each other. Because here's the thing: if um, if we're busy looking at others from the, from a distance, um, only looking for it and admiring from a distance, um, and we may have something that can we can add to each other. If I never say, "Hey, I like the way I like your hair," and your jewelry is cute, you never get to know that I sell jewelry. Mm-hmm. You know, you never because I never have to, I never get the chance to have the, com- the 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 conversation with you because I'm only from a distance. I'm hiding my individuality or my uniqueness. Yeah, doesn't make any sense. So I don't. Mm-hmm. Um, so the so the ideal the ideal for me of community is coming together as as the warriors that we are, as the fighters that we are, with all of our strategies, with all of our strategic ways of doing things, with all of our uniqueness and. Your uniqueness, your oddness, your strangeness, or whoever you are, connect with my uniqueness, oddness, and strangeness. Before you know it, you created something, you built something, you've enhanced something that we didn't even know we had. And uh, now, in our last few moments, I want to tie this into bridging the generational gap. Now that we have adopted all these principles, we believe in ourselves as our community, as a Black people, we're working together, and we are building our finances and we're mm-hmm. spending our money with each other right. now how can we take what we've learned what we know what we feel and pass it on to the future generations <laughs> that's exactly it you you um you when you get something don't just don't just hear something and say um that, that was good apply that 
make it applicable to you so that you can take that and pass the torch um set a blaze i mean set a trail rather, blaze a trail and begin to tell others you know well um I, i'm one of those i was one of those kids when i was younger i sat around a lot of my uh, my um my um older uh my grandparents when i you know i got where they were around and my aunts and those who were wise i sat there and i would listen to their wisdom okay. and i never thought that i would be <laughs> i never thought i would be I mean, growing up, you know, I mean, you know, you're going to get older. But I'm like, and some of the things I say now, I'm like, God, I'm like, I sound like an old man. But guess what? That that wisdom was given to me. That wisdom was given to me and I grabbed it and I'm able to give that to somebody else and encourage them to pass the torch. So just uh, that, blaze the trail. All right. Well, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for checking in to Neil Scott, Troy Vincent. Josephine Garcia, Jessica Williams, Vicki Lewis, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. And so thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Sorry, this is an abbreviated show. This was so good. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next year. Happy New Year. (laughs) All righty. Thank you for tuning in to Community Conversations. Um, Kaylee K turned six years old today. Yay! Yay! (laughs) All right, y'all have a blessed day. All righty, so let us let me get us off uh, Facebook. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Facebook. I'm sorry this message was so short. If I knew it was going to be this good, we would have had to have a longer message. <laughs> longer time. <laughs> so it's fine. It was good, we though. We have to run this back again another time. But thank you yeah. so much, Mylan. Thank you so, for having me. I appreciate you always. All right, and goodbye, everyone, on Facebook. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs> Stop recording.